What's up guys, it's your boy Kobe Shows again and today we are doing another lighting breakdown as well as a behind the scenes like you always love anytime I shoot my music videos and I also love to bring you a breakdown and also take you along the processes that I underwent to be able to achieve all the looks that I get in my music videos especially for this one. So without much ado, let us get right into the video and for the most part watch it through to the end and enjoy the lighting breakdown as well let us get right into the video all right for this particular video i had two locations going on for the filming of the entire video uh, the first part was at a mall garage here in kumasi kumasi mall to be precise i shot down there the garage or the parking area then we move on to a set or a room set which we may call a studio set but it was actually filmed in a room and all that i had was some lights to play around with and also some props like we had frames for the walls and we had to you know have some colors to change the look of the scene as well as the subjects themselves so let us start with the mall parking area then we will move on to the room setup as well just like how we shot the sequence okay so with the mall parking lot area we had just one area to shoot it's not like we were restricted from the other areas within the space but we chose not to spend so much time over there but to change each and every look with the lighting configuration and the lighting positioning as we went along so we didn't have to bombard ourselves with too many things because we were actually battling against time we didn't have so much time on our side so we had to quickly finish this because we were sh i think we shot this for over five hours and we started around i think a little bit close to midnight and so of course it didn't have so much time and everybody who was on set um, you know didn't really prepare for such a schedule for the shoot but we had to do it anyways so with the first setup my lighting guy of course my go-to lighting guy every time I reach out to him for these versatile event lighting that he uses disclaimer please if you don't really understand how light works uh, talking about proximity intensity shaping of the light and how colors work if you don't understand color theory using these lights wouldn't be very ideal you may find a lot of challenges along the way but if you are versed or if you are conversant with lighting no matter what kind of lights that you are given be it a light that is not meant for video you can still move around it and fix all the you know wrong um, looks that it gives it in post but for the most part this particular light or these lights that my friend has uh, quite looks good for the continuous uh, neutral lights the white and the little bit of a warm look from some particular light he has it doesn't really render the skin tones wrongly it's a little bit off but it's very easy to fix that in post but for the led lights of course because they yield color um they are good and one good thing that i also love about these lights is that it doesn't flicker no matter what no matter what settings that you put them at it doesn't flicker so even though it's not meant for video purposely i still use it because at any given setting it doesn't flicker and that's a very good thing or a very good tip when you're looking for lights for video the first thing that I had my friend do in the background was to place the light. I think it was actually his idea to have the lights very close to the wall to throw it all the way up. But one thing that he thought would work, which I immediately cautioned him that wasn't going to work, even though he tried anyway for us or for me to prove my point was that he wanted to place these lights very close to the wall, like you see in the shot, and still have the fog being exposed. But one thing that you should know about shooting with fog or effects with smoke is that the light should be behind the fog having the fog within or between the light as well as the camera so if you're shooting towards light anything that passes in between gets exposed by the light so be it liquid like rain be it um, smoke be it powder be it anything that has a reflective nature reflective property having the light behind it or having that particular subject or substance or whatever it is within or between the camera and the light is going to help it expose it better so instead of having the exposure of the fog better we rather had a lot of shadows from the fog and you couldn't really necessarily see it so much so that's a quick tip if you are working with 
either reflective surfaces or working with fog for the most part. And so for a quick fix to have the fog exposed is that I put my light, my actual key light, which I normally use for my um, music videos or for filming sequences, the SL60W from Godox. I had it bare light hitting the back of my subject's head as well as being in between the fog. So the fog was actually being controlled. Initially, we had uh, trouble having the fog shoot evenly across and not shoot with a very you know um, narrow or acute snoot coming out like that because it was gonna look very very fake and that wasn't what we are going for so I had someone stand behind the fog machine hold it and once it was time to puff it out he would wriggle it around like that and shoot it all the way to evenly have the fog in the whole space behind the subject as well as within the frame so that's what we did but initially we had a fog mounted on a, a little bit of um, um, an elevation a height but it wasn't the best because it was still shooting directly towards the camera and because the ventilation of this particular area was so much the fog had to disappear and this particular device this fog machine wouldn't you know shoot all the way it would have to have time to recycle before the fog will be ready to be puffed out again so that was another challenge so we had to time anytime we had to shoot it and when the fog machine was recycling i still had to shoot and find very very interesting looks for it so i could still use it without the fog other than that we we're going to always have challenges with battling time to make it quick for the second set so an interesting look that i had from these lights or from these event lights that my friend owns is that it can flicker it can give you some flashes as well as you know some very interesting and animated looks from the light and i had him flicker the light in front of my subject so i actually use those lights as a key light with my SL60W rather back there as a rim light with a versatile colored LED light meant for events to be very precise or to let you know blasting against the wall as well and I changed the look as we went on and with the flashes it gave us very interesting looks but the artist that I've worked with who I've worked with for over and over again or uh, many times as uh, someone that would always go in for shades and you know that shades will always reflect whatever is in front of it so having light that's flickering in front of him was going to give that nice effect that we were looking for so it gave us that and we went along with it so the second um, look I wouldn't say scene because still in that same area was that I had him press his back against the wall and we blasted the red light against his face like that so the red lights were still coming from these LED heads that are not so ideal again I'm gonna keep on saying that this is not ideal because if you're gonna go for colored lights or you're gonna go for lights that are actually meant for filming then you're gonna have to go for lights that can handle um, you know gels or you can put gels in front of them so they can change the light But if you are under a budget or if you can still work with these particular lights You can still go in for that and that's exactly what I went for You know that anything that obstructs light or gets in the way of light There's definitely gonna be a shadow cast and I didn't have to worry about it I didn't care because it still looked pleasing anyway to me so um, Doing photography and filmmaking has made me understand that working with shadows um, kind of normally looks pleasing more in videos than in photography because in photography it's still and you see as it is but with video because it's animated your eyes are fixed on a lot of moving things and not just one thing and i think that's the way that our mind gets fooled that the shadows are still fine even though they are still there in video so that's how i went along with it and of course we didn't go without using the fog machine in this particular set but for when we used the fog i had to change the led lights to blue to change the look and i had my subject press back against the wall once more by this time i shot in the side view profile having the fog from behind the blue lights cast or shot in front of him so i could create a very interesting look and i used that particular effect in reverse to end the video and it looked so well i think one remark from one of my friends who reviewed this video spoke about that and i was pleased that what i thought wasn't gonna be very noticeable was actually noticeable by people <laughs> talking about directing i can't say so much because uh, i didn't have any squabble or i didn't have any issue or difficulty working with this artist because i've worked with them over and over and over again so the confidence was there and 
you could get along so easily. So the second scene was shot within a room or a studio space. We actually created a studio space out of a room against a wall, I think two walls meeting, and we placed some frames on the wall all across these particular frames were having images of the artist in pencil and it you know gave us that look that uh, is actually him we are talking about and he's the one behind the whole thing and we didn't have just him on that particular track he featured another artist on the song and so we had to change the look for the artist who was featured so what i did was um the led lights were still planted on set but this time i separated the colors i used orange for the featured artist or to single him out or separate him out of the blue cast from another led light that was being cast against the wall and that's how i achieved this so anytime that you're working with colored lights if you have multiple lights to work with in color try to separate them so that you know you can create some nice contrast in them but you should also understand color theory what colors match with others otherwise you're gonna go with any other color and wouldn't really necessarily make sense or aesthetically become pleasing but understanding color theory is gonna help you match colors right just like i did because on the color wheel as i understand as i remember from school orange contrast or complements blue so this is how i ended up using these colors or choosing these two colors we had a model also on set um, this particular artist don't normally want to first of all feature people on his on his tracks let alone have other subjects like a model you know perform in his music videos but i tried to convince him to use one and i think it pretty much worked well because um it uh, the, the the lyrics of the track even though wasn't really revolving around a model we still had some nice scenes with a model dancing in front of the camera in a blue lit space we maintained the same space but we had to remove all these frames to give that look of another space even though we shot in that same space all right so the model wore a green outfit but because of the blue cast you couldn't really um you know perceive the green of the clothing but it still looked well because it had these reflective threads across it all and i think it had um, a lace kind of pattern in front of it so the laces in pattern had these reflective properties and so they reflected back in the whole blue light and also with the makeup and everything that was glossy especially with the lips with the eyeshadow as they call it on the eyelids okay um, really worked so well in the whole shot and I got some close-ups to really accentuate the features of the model because this model is gorgeous and and it really worked so well in the whole scene so the last thing that I'm going to talk about is the artist. This is what I'm going to talk about just before the lighting breakdown. And the artist had yet another performance with. I didn't really necessarily use so much of these shots in the final cut because um, I felt that too much of the same space had been used. And so I had to change it anyway. So um, I shot uh with yet another color separation this time i used red instead of orange but maintained my blue cast against the wall and um, it really pretty much worked well for the scene i'm not saying that it wasn't the best of the best but i felt that i had used the same space for over and over again for three different people or three different characters and so for the final cut i was thinking about you know using for the most part what i shot in the mall parking area other than using so much of the studio space for this artist because he was a subject in a mall, in a mall parking area and that was just about that. And so that ends the description or the explanation of how I shot this music video entirely and let's get on to the lighting breakdown so that we understand how each and everything on set got interacted with or by the lighting that I placed in the set or on set. So let's get right into it without much ado and let's see how best we can understand in a lighting breakdown with some arrows so we see and stills how the lights worked let's get right into it all right so let's begin with this image where we have this model all right you notice readily that everywhere looks blue the background her skin as well as here also part of the background as well also looks very blue okay so the light is actually coming from this direction okay 
that's why you see that this part of her face looks very very bright than as compared to this side of her face okay so the light is coming from the right hand side towards the left and because the type of light that i use is kind of diffused and um, was quite close to the subject it made it look soft and um, the fall off from the highlights to the shadows aren't so precise but there's a little bit of uh, graduation from the highlights to the shadows and that's how i got this particular shot moving on to the next shot is of the same model in the same space at this time around um, we have a wider field of view and that's because of um, some variations in the shots that i wanted to achieve all right so the light is still coming from this side that's why you notice the shadow over here and you know that anything that obstructs light actually causes or casts a shadow against whatever background there is so you should know where you're positioning your light and you should know that the opposite side of where the light is coming from is exactly where the shadow is also going to be so you have to be mindful of that but i really like this whole scene because of the shadow that was also moving or in motion with the model and it looked so right and you realize that the light is actually concentrated in this space just the space and that's because the light was hitting a very small area and uh, it wasn't a very large light source and so it didn't seep all the way to the side but it rather centered its concentration in this area and it looks so right so it does very similar to the show that we previously spoke about just that the field of view or the focal length is a little bit more wider then on to the next frame is of the artist of the music video or the main artist for the music video and um, over here what we see immediately is a bright area over here which looks cool all right and a warm area and that's because a light that was coming from here that's been the key light is actually warm in tone and the light coming from here which is normally my sl60 w which i normally use as my key light was rather used as a rim to cast some light over here the side of his head and uh it created a very nice separation of him from the background even though the background looks very pure and bright All right and the background um had some lights coming from below and hitting the wall itself and that was down below as i explained in the in the shots of the behind the scenes earlier and so that's simply how i lit the shot this shot was actually lit by three um lights one coming from here all right as one the other coming from here to hit the side of his head that's number two and the third is from below hitting the background all right this area looks warm and that's because of the light that's coming from here as a key light hitting the side of his face and it's soft enough to disperse all the way over here and it's not seeping all the way across to this side because of the lights that's coming from below all right which is blue and it's over powering the intensity that it has over here okay and that's about that for this particular shot so moving on to the next frame we have the subject in the same area but this time the lighting configuration is changed this is the same light source just that this time it is a little bit more warm and it looks a little bit green in this area because of the color gradient style that i went for and i just wanted it to look a little bit more different from this particular shot all right even though it's the same light sources but just like you see these led lights coming from below hitting the wall in blue we changed it this time to orange all right okay so that's what's hitting the side and it's just like it was down below in this shot all right it's hitting this side of the wall just to create some visual appeal and color separation from here to here all right and that's exactly how i lit this particular shot so this particular shot was lit with two lights one from here and the other hitting the wall over there for some visual interest and some color separation then onto the next frame is this dramatic scene where there's light coming from down below you realize that the uh, shadows over here okay over the 
top of the finger all over here. That's because light is coming from below and it's hitting the side and it's casting some shadows over here. All right. Okay. So the light, the same lights, the same LED lights were used for this scene, but this time was turned into red to create some visual appeal and also to cast some nice shadows over here. Red and black are sometimes used by designers to create some visual appeal like I did over here in this shot just to create some you know emotions or to influence some emotions in the viewer so that the viewer would actually take what the artist was talking about very seriously and also to pay close attention to each and every word all right and that's the reason why I used red for this particular scene and that was the only light source that i used for this particular scene and on to the next is a similar shot from um this particular scene okay it's the same area but this time i used fog in here all right and i maintained my orange lights from down below okay all right hitting this side of the wall okay and um the fog was actually from below so that's the fog coming from below and it's actually behind my subject right it's going behind my subject and it's diffusing and dispersing out over here to create some visual appeal so you notice that my key light is still coming from here hitting my subject on this side all right and i have yet another light this time introduced to the side of his face just to lit him up evenly and also to help him stand out of the background or stand out in the scene on to the next frame which is a shot which is similar to um this scene where i had this red light coming from down below hitting the subject and casting a shadow over here we literally have the same lighting configuration but this time with some fog hitting the face of the subject and the fog of course stands in between the light all right and the subject all right so the light is influencing the fog to become more prominent in the shot and it's creating some visual interest just for the aesthetic purposes and also to help single out the subject and overall create some kind of separation from highlights to the shadows all right so that's just about that there was just one light coming from below with a fog within it as well as the subject standing against the wall this side was left blank and still maintained in the shot because i wanted to create a nice composition with the subject standing right in the middle with the light also being concentrated over here and total darkness over here but i realized that there's a crease and that's because of the wall that's where the wall actually ends and it begins from here and uh it's standing in the shot just to create some separation in the composition and also to create some variations in shadows highlights and midtones on to the next frame is this shot where i have the featured artist sitting in a space where we have blue okay orange and let's say white light hitting this side of his head all right okay so let's break it down first of all i cast the blue light from here to hit the wall okay and i positioned another light a little bit further from the blue light to hit his face and also to hit the side his chest just to you know create some separation and you notice that these lights actually complement themselves and that's because of the color um, orange is a complementary color when it comes to blue and um, it creates some separation because one is warm all right and one is cool they actually work as contrasting colors to help create more visual appeal in the shot so you notice that there's a light coming from the left to the right and that's because uh, i wanted to separate him from the blue background and also to make him you know overall look more appealing and to attract more attention overall then on to the last frame or the last shot 
or the last image to speak about is the very same lighting configuration but just that this time around i brought the rim light which was initially from this side the left of the frame or the left side of the frame to the right and repositioned onto the right hand side of the frame hidden from right to left all right and that's what is creating this nice separation from the dark background over here and uh, I maintained my light my blue lights also to still hit from the right hand side to the left to create some nice separation from the orange that you see over here all right so the orange is still maintained in its position and it's creating a very nice look very nice warm tone over here to separate him from the blue background all right and that's just about that for the lighting breakdown so thank you very much for watching this video through to the end if you enjoyed it please subscribe to my channel share it like leave a comment and let me know if you enjoyed this breakdown if you want to see more videos like this kindly let me know and of course turn on the post notification button to be always notified anytime i upload a new video onto my youtube channel until the next video have a wonderful day see ya Thank you.